Hey guys, I'm back in the season. All right, guys, I'm back with my TNA Lockdown 2014 preview, and I think this this card has some decent builds. I think the only two matches they built up really well has been the Magnus and John Wartel match and the Team Dixie versus Team MVP match. But apart from that, the rest of the card looks kind of filler. Uh, uh, well, they've built up Storm and Gunner really well as, as well. So yeah. So the first match I'm going to talk about is Madison Real versus Gail Kim for the Knockouts title. Um, I see this ma I see Mass and Rain retaining. I don't really care about this feud at all. I hope this is end of the feud. Can we please get some fresh knockouts for TNA? Please. I do not want to sit through another six months of Gail Kim versus Madison Rain. No, no, no. Please, TNA, if you're watching me right now, sign some new knockouts. Um, I see Mass and Rain going over. Take Gil Kim out of the other. Just stop having Gil Kim in the um, knockouts of it, uh, in the entire picture all the time. I know she's a great wrestler, probably one of the best wrestlers you've ever had in TNA. But please put hire some knockouts in TNA, please. I'm begging you, please, please, please. Um, I don't want to sit through another Gil Kim versus Madison Rain feud. So yeah. Madison goes over. Um, the second match we're going to talk about is EC3 versus a mystery opponent. Um, apparently on impact, um, EC3 attacked um, current Angle, so that means Angle got injured. So apparently on this card it says that Angle's not going to be there, he picked up an injury. So I guess um, EC3 is probably going to face a jobber, or maybe like a X Division guy, maybe um, like um, Shark Boy somebody. I don't know. I, I don't know who would face. I, I see EC3. I'm going to say EC3 goes over anyway. Um, the third match we're going to talk about is Manic vs. Tiger Uno. Uh, Tiger Uno. Well, I hope I pronounced your name right. Tiger Uno vs. Manic. Um, this was a match that was thrown on the card. This is your. Uh, well, Tiger Uno. Uh, uh, well, this new Division guy. He was advertised on uh, to be at Blockdown and he did a video package for this guy on impact for a couple of weeks now, about two or three weeks now, so he's had some pretty good builds and he, they've been, um, you know, showing, hyping up his uh, debut and stuff. But like I said, um, TNA's X-Vision really needs sort sorting out, because TNA's X-Vision is total shit in my opinion. Um, it's just doesn't, there's no, there's no feud in the X-Vision, there's no direction for the X-Vision, and we haven't got any fresh X-Vision wrestlers. Back when WCW and ECW, when WCW was around back in the 90s, the WCW um, brought in cruiserweights from um, Japan and Mexico and China to, you know, extend the um, cruiserweight division. I, now I think that this is what TNA should do. So that's some indie X Division guys from Ring of Honor, um, Mexico, Japan, China, Germany, just guys like that and sign them to, uh, sign them to the X Division. But I see Tiger Uno going over. Um, the fourth fact I'm going to talk about is mm, the fourth fact I'm going to talk about is Mr. Anderson versus Samuel Shaw. Um, I see Samuel Shaw going over here. Um, I don't see uh, Mr. Anderson going over here because they're trying to build up this Samuel Shaw creepy character, Dexter kind of character thing. So I'm going to say Samuel Shaw goes over. Fifth, uh, the fifth fact I'm going to talk about is the Great Moolah, who was from WCW. Uh, versus uh, and Sand uh, Sandra, of oh, I said your name, and Luquana Wrestling One versus Bad Influence and uh, Chris Saban. I see the Great Moolah going over here because he's a new guy. They, they, these these are new guys going over in T in TNA. So I'm gonna say that the uh, the Great Moolah goes over here and um, yeah, kind of sort of Bad Influence. I've got a job to these guys, but whatever. Um, the sixth match I'm going to talk about is uh, the sixth match. The sixth match. The sixth match I'm going to talk about is Gunner versus Storm. Um, this feud has had some really good feud. You've had um, this feud is a feud I'm excited for personally because these two guys were former friends, former tag partners, now turned enemies all over um, Gunner's briefcase. Then you had Storm turn heel on Gunner uh, um, a couple uh, about la last week on Impact. So yeah, you've had a lot of good, and then they had a brawl this week on Impact, so yeah, you've had a lot of good story going into this feud, and I'm really enjoying it. I hope that, um, I hope that, um, Donny goes over here, um, oh yeah, the match is the last standing match. 
I hope that Gunner does go over here um, to kill, kill, keep building up Gunner to the main event scene because I think Gunner is a, a potential world champion. Some um, this um, you know in the future. I mean he's still young in his career, and I, I I'm, and I'm glad how they're slowly building up Gunner that, to the main event scene. They did this last year with Magnus, and I'm glad that they're doing this this year with uh, uh, with Gunner. So yeah, I see Gunner going over, and then this feud continues to sign versus him. maybe potential Bam for Gory. I don't know. Um, the eighth that was it. The seventh match I'm going to talk about is Team MVP versus Team Dixie slash Team Rude or uh, whatever. Um, so on Team MVP, you've got MVP, uh, the American Wolves. You've got Jeff Hardy versus Team Dixie, which is Bobby Rude, the Bromans, and Austin Aries. Um, I see and um, Team MVP co uh, going over here because MVP is new in the company and the American Wolves are new in the company, and it would make sense to have MVP lose this match. Um, his first pay few match on Impact uh, to like, Team Dexy so, so I'm going to say that Team MVP goes over here and um, MVP gets control of TNA. <coughs> and then the last match of the night is Magnus vs Samoa Joe for the World Heavyweight title in a, in a steel cage match. Only way you can win the match is by uh, submission or KO by knockout. I see Joe, um, this is kind of a hard toss up here. Do I want Joe to go over or do I want Magnus to go over? Now the now, I know that everybody in the IWC wide WC want Samoa Joe to go over in this match, and I want it to go over. I want to see Samoa Joe as world champion again, because I want to see Samoa Joe finally become world champion. I, I, I'm glad that TNA are finally pushing Samoa Joe again. I'm glad that they're making him relevant again. I mean, they've treated him for shit for so many damn years, and I was, I've been frustrated for so long that Samoa Joe has not, has not had that big push since 2008 in the main event scene. And that has been frustrated as hell that Samoa Joe hasn't had that big main event push. But on the other hand, you make Magnus look weak when he's, ta when he's had defended that world title against guys like Sting and AJ Styles and um, guys like that. I mean, and Garner as well. So, Magnus has kind of been a weak champion. I mean, he's kind of not had a clean win as a champion. I mean, he's. He can. I mean, he's had all this interference in his world title matches and stuff like that. So, I, I see Joe going over here. I, I think Joe's going to win the world title. Um, but I'm a fan of both guys, Magnus and Joe, and this views has some pretty good build. So yeah, I see Joe going over. So yeah, this is this was my TNA Lockdown 2014 uh, preview. What do you guys think about this card? Leave your thoughts on this preview and on this card in the comments. And that's what you guys. Right out.